we're talking about what's happening in the 731. On the Hub City Now, with your host, Tyrone Tony Reed Jr. Hello and welcome to Hub City Now. I'm your host, um, Tyrone Tony Reed Jr. Um, today we have um, with us James E. Cherry, who's an author of six books. Is that correct? Correct. Um, poet, um, extraordinary um, writer. Um, he's about to release, um, by the time this comes out, I'm sure it'll, it'll be out by then, but it's called um, The Edge of the Wind. Wonderful book. Um, needs to be on Oprah's list of, of book, book, reading material. Uh, Hollywood needs to call them and get the rights so they can make an Oscar-winning movie. Ah, oh, you're so kind. <laughs> uh, you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> but um, before we go into um, your new book, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, I was born and raised here in Jackson, uh, public schools, uh, Union University. Mm -hmm. And it was at Union when I started to write. Um, I'm also, uh, I've been artist in residence uh, with various organizations here, including the Alternative School and uh, the Boys and Girls Club and Keep My Hood Good. And okay. uh, so uh, writing has been a passion of mine, you know, I, I guess, since my college days. And it's something that uh, has continued to pursue me. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the way that I look at it. And instead of me getting into writing, writing got into me. Uh, how, how did that happen? Uh, I was in a literature class, okay. and uh, I guess I was in my mid twenties, and uh, we were studying uh, some some literature and just the idea of self expression. Mm. All of a sudden, it, it became kind of like an an epiphany to me mm. almost, and so uh, I began to write. I started writing poetry, and I guess the main thing I, I did was that uh, I started to read everything I could get my hands on, okay. and so that that further further fed this desire to uh, uh, to express myself through, through writing, and it, I, I just stayed with it uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you say that, I see so many similarities to the characters in this in this latest book, mm -hmm. um, the things like the, the love of po poetry. Mm -hmm. um, what is it about poetry? Because I know you've written, you've had several collections. Um, what is it about poetry that you were drawn to? Uh, poetry has the ability to uh, help us understand the, the, the human condition. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, for, for one thing, the, the, the language is precise, and uh, there's this premium put, on, put upon imagery. Mm -hmm. And so poetry has this immediate effect uh, as opposed to a novel. I guess the best way to look at it is that poetry is more like a 100-meter sprint. And a novel is more like a marathon, so right. to speak. So with poetry, you get this immediate effect. You get this 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 uh, uh, imagery that's that's uh, vivid mm -hmm. and, and and should jump off the page. And mm -hmm. so, but both both genres they help us understand what it means to be uh, human right. uh, each and every day. Right, yeah. and, and express emotions that we might not be able to express in other ways. Exactly. Um, boy. I just can't contain my excitement about talking about this, but we're going, we're going to do that in the next segment. Okay. But um, um, where do you get your inspiration from for, for the subjects, subject matter that you deal with in your poems and in your novels? Well, uh, I think being alive every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, being a poet and a, and a writer, uh, your, your, your artistic sensitivities are, are highly honed. And so, I can get an idea from a snippet of a conversation that I'm that I may overhear, or just interacting with someone on on a one on one basis, or you know events from the from the headlines each day. So it's 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 really hard to pinpoint uh, uh, one specific uh, area where ideas come from. But I think just moving through the world each and every day, something may catch my ear or my eye, and and immediately it will appeal to me as a poem or a story or a novel. Right. Yeah. Um, you've written both. You've written both poetry and novels. Um, how long does it take you for, for, um, from beginning of the novel to the mm -hmm. end and also the poetry? Or just does it depend? Well, on the poetry, as, as I stated earlier, is more immediate. So uh, 
I can write a poem in anywhere from an hour to a day. Mm. It, it just depends on uh, the subject matter and, and how long that the poem goes. A novel uh, generally takes about a year or longer. Mm. I mean, with a novel, uh, my approach is I start with an image or I start with language and I have a tentative outline, but right. I don't box myself in by the outline that I'm going to follow point to the A. T, point, right. right. So right. by doing that, you allow the character some flexibility. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if you just are a stickler to an outline, uh, well, a hey, the, the, the character may not want to do that. Right. So right. If, if you just kind of let the, let the characters take over the story, let the characters drive the story, uh, that's where this, the, 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 the element of surprise enters. Right. And if you're surprised as a writer, then whoever, who, who, whoever is reading uh, the book, they'll be surprised also. Right. And it, I've had that happen to oh, me yeah. while writing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. where did that come yeah, from? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> where did that come from? I was not going there, but th and that happened. Yeah. And that's amazing. It's, um, that's, a, that's a great feeling. Right. Yeah. How, how, how does it feel when, pe when you hear people, because you've gotten such praises on, on your poems and your novels, mm -hmm. um, how does that feel for you when people praise you on that work? That well, it, 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 it lets me know that I'm on the right track. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, Tony, the, the more I know about writing, the more I realize that I have so much more to learn mm -hmm. because you, 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 you never get to the end of, 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 of being perfect right. or, 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 or perfection. So right. I'm always striving to, to write the next line better or the next sentence or, or, or the next paragraph. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, did writing start with you and your family, or are there other members in your family who? Well, actually, writing? you know, I was looking through some of my my mother's. You know, she she's passed now uh, mm -hmm. in ninety four. But actually, I was looking through some of her papers one day, and I saw where she was actually writing poetry. Wow! You know? <laughs> and wow. So, and, and 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 you know, my my father used to talk about you know writing a great novel one day. So so. I think uh, you know the the seeds were planted long ago, but initially I wanted to be a sports writer. Hmm. And uh, like I said, when I was in college, uh, that's when the that's when the shift begins to have the uh, you know started to happen. And so uh, the the literary aspect entered into the picture, mm -hmm. and uh, I began to do poetry and, and fiction that type. But I still dabble in in in, in you know, journalism. Uh, right. From time to time, I'll write a column for the Jackson Sun. Or what kind of columns do you? It's write? a it's a op ed piece. Okay. Yeah. So I've I've, I've written a few of those, and uh, one of the things that uh, having an MFA in creative writing, mm -hmm. uh, it it exposes you to theory. Okay. Right. So that helps with writing essays mm -hmm. and, and 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 critical pieces as well. So. Uh, to me, there's only two two types of writing, you know, good and bad. And so, <laughs> whether it's poetry, fiction, journalism, or, or whatever, right. it either is going to be good or it's going to be bad. <laughs> right, right. But when what I found is that two people can read your your poetry or your book. One can come away thinking, "Wow, that blew my mind." The mm -hmm. other person can go, mm, "It was all right," yeah, or it wasn't yeah. that good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you ever get do you ever feel like you get pigeonholed and, and feel like you, you know, if you get um, critiqued about something that you need to change it or you have to change it? Or? No, I wouldn't approach writing that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't advise anyone to write for a particular genre or in a, in a particular style. Mm -hmm. Just write the way you write, mm -hmm. you know, and that will become your style. And so... My advice is to just be who you are. My first novel was about a uh, homicide detective. Mm -hmm. You know, my second book of poetry was about uh, you know turning fifty years old and, and and looking back and 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 reflecting. My first book, my my first full book of poetry was about uh, uh, honoring and, and and recognizing people that have have been a major influence on my life and 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 career as a poet. So. Uh, Poetry and, and creative writing is uh, eclectic mm -hmm. in nature. And I think uh, being original 
is 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 key for for any writer. So just be yourself. All right. Well, when we come back um, from our break, we're going to talk about this future Oscar winning <laughs> movie okay. um, by James E. Cherry called Edge of the Wind. We'll be right back. Sounds good. As a former NFL football player, I never thought I would let this happen to me. I knew I had to do something. Thanks to VIP's weight loss and testosterone programs, I'm in the best shape of my life. I feel better, I look better, and live a healthier life. Hello and welcome back to Hub City Now. I'm your host, Tyrone Tony Reed Jr. And we're here with poet and author James E. Cherry. And now we're going to get ready to talk about his latest novel, Edge of the Wind. Um, I personally got to read this book before it was released and I was amazed by the imagery and the characters um, that he, he, um, James wrote it in a way where it felt like people that I've met throughout my life. Um, you finding these, you're finding people um, from different age groups, from different races, from different backgrounds, all thrown into a situation at a critical point in somebody's life. Um, there were so many different things that were in the book, and that's the reason why I don't have a tie on today because. I wanted to be comfortable. <laughs> I wanted to be ready to talk about the emotions and, and the characters that I got to learn about in this book. Um, first of all, um, let's talk about um, where you came up with the idea and when. Okay. Well, the idea generated from, uh, in 2003, there was a hostage situation at Diasburg State Community Okay, uh, okay, you know what? Yeah, okay, I was right. talking. I'm sorry to interrupt, but That's okay. but I was talking to my wife is Tawana Cheshire, yeah. and she remembers that okay. very vividly <laughs> to the point where she talked about it so much. Uh -huh. And when I got to the end of the book, I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is exactly what she was talking about." <laughs> okay. So I'm glad to have. I I was going to ask you that, and I'm glad you brought that up. But I'll, I'll let you go ahead and, and talk. Okay, about so it. <laughs> in 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 that particular case. Uh, the hostage taker, he held a math class hostage, right? Mm -hmm. And so being a poet, I thought, well, hey, well, what would happen if my guy took a literature class hostage? Right. And so that's what unfolds. Uh, it's It takes place in, in, in uh, the, 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 the setting in my book takes place in rural West Tennessee. So mm -hmm. There are um, some similarities between mm -hmm. that incident and, and, and what takes place in the in the Right, right. In the like novel, I said, right? I read that when I got to the end. I was like, oh, my goodness, this, <laughs> this, is, this sounds familiar. Um, one of the main characters is uh, Alexander Vanderpool, who is an African-American young man. Uh, how old is he? He's 28. 20, 20, 28. Yeah. Um, he suffers from mental illness. Yes. Um, he's what, schizophrenic. He is. And... He starts hearing voices, and he gets to the point where I guess everybody does in their life where what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. um, what am I here for? What, what good am I? Right. Um, and it comes to a point where he's been – I'll let you <laughs> – I'll let you go ahead and tell. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, he has lost his job. Okay. And when he lost his job, he lost his insurance, and so he he's off his meds basically. Right. So he's moved in with his with his sister. I, I don't I don't want to give away too right, much of right, it, but, right, but right. In, anyway, he he's living with his sister, and uh, he has absorbed himself in the books that's in her room, right. which is a whole lot of literature, right? right? And so he discovers that writing is a way for him to save himself, so mm -hmm. to speak. So. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, that's what writing does. I mean, uh, personally, 
uh, when I started to write, I was at the point where uh, I was looking for answers for my own life and, mm -hmm. and, and kind of drifting and this type of thing. Mm -hmm. So it was writing that actually pulled me back and grounded me and, and, and gave me a sense of purpose in, you know, in, in a lot of ways. And so this is what happens for Alex in the book. So Alex, uh, he starts reading this literature and he's, he's, he starts to write, right? Mm -hmm. And he's, he's writing these poems. And he, he, he gets to a point where he wants to find out if they're any good. Right. Okay. And so he has visited this local college before, but they put him out. Right. Uh, you know, they and thought. He encountered a sheriff named exactly. was it Warren, Johnson. Sheriff Warren Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. Right. So anyway, uh, he decides to go back to the school. Mm -hmm. And this time he's prepared. He's determined that he's willing to die for his belief in, 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 in poetry mm -hmm. and the ability that it has to save his life. So mm -hmm. he takes a gun with him, and uh, when they try to put him out this time, he pulls a gun and he takes the... the and the, a knife, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's serious, yeah, and, he's uh, serious. And, and so when they try to pull him out, he takes the class hostage. Right. Um, and like I said, there's so many different themes throughout the book. W one is mental illness. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, not too long ago, the NAACP had a meeting with um, a sheriff here, uh, Sheriff John Mayer, okay. about, um, I guess, uh, President Harrell Carter was was of the opinion that, you know, there are some situations where people that the sheriff department or the police department deal with, people have mental illnesses. Exactly. And you know, locking them up and put them in, in jail yeah. isn't helping them. Or shooting them. Or shooting them I and mean, killing you know, them. Right? From my understanding, there's supposed to be a list of people with with mental problems or, or disabilities that law enforcement is supposed to be aware of. So when they encounter these people, you know. They know, know who to call. Exactly. Right. Or or how to approach them. Or how to approach them. Right. Exactly. And so that that was something that they talked about in that meeting. And when I read that read this book, I was like, wow, this is so timely because mm -hmm. we have those things going on, not mm -hmm. just here, but mm -hmm. all over the country, all over the world, where people who have mental illnesses are doing things like that. Yeah, and in and, and Alex's first encounter with the sheriff, uh, the sheriff roughs him up. Yeah. You know, he... <laughs> He goes upside his head. He left a mark. He did. <laughs> Literally. He did. He did. <laughs> so uh, I'll just say that, you know, the relation, the, the, in, in the book, the sheriff becomes a hostage negotiator. Mm -hmm. So there's a rough relationship starting out between the sheriff and Alex. Because you already have some bad history. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and, there's the, and so there's the theme of mental illness. There's the theme of police brutality. There's also the theme of fathers and sons. Exactly. And wow, I mean, there were some moments in there that were, were so powerful because the sheriff is going through something w regarding his son. Right. And Alexander is going through something regarding his father. Exactly. And there is just kind of everybody's just kind of caught in the middle of this storm of emotions mm. that they haven't really dealt with yet. Right. And now they're being forced to deal with it under extreme circumstances. <laughs> well, I think we are um, exceptions to the rule because we had fathers in our life. Right. You know, but a lot of my friends didn't. Right. And I felt that, uh, well, I, I feel that uh, black boys need male figures in their exactly. life. Exactly. Especially their fathers for, for guidance and, and, and just how to be a man, right? Exactly. And so uh, this is an issue that plagues our community mm -hmm. still today. And mm -hmm. so... I guess the thing about the book is that all of the characters want something. Right, exactly. And so, and anytime you read a novel, the character needs to want something. Exactly. Especially the, the, the uh, main character. And so, if, if uh, you know, this is a, a, you know, writing tip that, you know, <laughs> that, that, you know we'll uh, discuss a little later. But anytime you write a book, let your characters want something. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let them just be passive and, exactly. and things happen to them. You want mm -hmm. the characters to do something, right? Exactly. Okay, so uh, every character in the book wants something. And so by being in this confined space, they all interact with one another. Mm -hmm. And actually their lives kind of intertwine, you know, right, so to speak. Right, right. Yeah. He, him holding those people in that room not only makes them think about, 
you know, do I have m- much more time to live? But why am I living? Oh, what do I want to do exactly. with my life? Okay. Man, very powerful. Man, you read this book. <laughs> I did right? read the book. I did read the book. I was, I was, I was amazed. All right. Um, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk just a little bit more about Edge of the Wind. Let you know where you can find it, and um, James is gonna give you all some writing tips. We'll be right back. As a former NFL football player, I never thought I would let this happen to me. I knew I had to do something. Thanks to VIP's weight loss and testosterone programs, I'm in the best shape of my life. I feel better, I look better, and live a healthier life. Hello and welcome back to Hub City. Um, I'm your host, Tyrone Tony Reed Jr., and we're back here with James E. Cherry, the author of Edge of the Wind, which you are going to want to read. You, you're really going to want to read it. Um, we've been talking about the themes that are in the book, mental illness, police brutality, fathers and sons. Um, p- the power of poetry is a very strong one. Um, also, another one is purpose in life. And I wanted to read just a short um little passage from the book um, with regarding one of the hostage, hostages. Um, her name was Megan. And now Megan is, is Megan fly. Is, is that the, that's the teacher. She is the instructor. Instructor. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, in the passage, th- this is what she says. Um, he, he um, let me set up the, the scene just for really quick. Um, Alexander has just asked her a very crucial question. Why are you here? Because, uh, she's she's got a book of, of poetry. Yeah. Um, she's been nominated for an award, um, and she really has a desire to do another book. And he asks the question while he's holding her hostage, "Why are you here?" And that question gets her thinking. And and this is the passage that kind of just stuck out with, to me. What are you doing here? She thought about Sarah's praise for her first book and wanted to tell her, the class, or anyone that would listen that she was working on a second collection of poetry. Like Solomon spawning upstream, she had to go wherever the language led her, and she knew if she didn't follow her instincts and get out of Stovall, with or without Michael, who was her husband, she would drown in the very thing that gave her life. I'm telling you. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. The imagery in this book, I mean, the, the way, you, as, as I said before, the way you wrote your characters mm-hmm. made the reader feel exactly what they felt. And we've all felt that at one time. You know, we look back over our lives and we go, what have I, either what have I done with my life or what do I want to do with my life? And where am I going? Mm-hmm. And if, I do this, will I get stuck in this? Or if I go this way? I mean, those are questions that we all think of. And the only reason why they kind of are thinking about them now is because they have a gun and a knife (laughs) held up to them. uh, And they're stuck in a room with someone who has mental illness. Um, But I I just want to commend you on on this work because it is – it's very important, as you said, that the father and son thing, mm-hmm. um, the mental illness, the, the way po- um, law enforcement agencies interact. Because mm-hmm. there's another law enforcement agency in the book that mm-hmm. doesn't share the sheriff's resolve of They're not so nice. Th- right. <laughs> they, they, they don't really care about solving yeah, yeah. things peacefully. They just yeah. want to get it over with. Um, what are some tips that you have after writing this book about just timeliness um well you actually hit the the nail the nail on the head when you said be original uh-huh. uh don't some people think if i'm if i'm going to be a writer i need to find out what the latest trend is but by the time you get that uh-huh. book out that yeah. trend is gone yeah. <laughs> yeah. i remember when twilight was a, such a big kid and everybody thought oh i gotta right. write a vampire right. story and right. before long that was yeah. gone yeah. um what tips do you have for um future writers out there people who Want to write uh, well, I'm a big proponent, as I stated, you know, when we opened up, uh, mm-hmm. that you have to read. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and you have to read deeply and widely because it's it's through reading that uh, we first fall in love with with language. Right. And so, and and when you read, you're not reading to emulate anybody, but you, it reading exposes you to different uh, avenues of expression. So right. you may have this great idea for this book, but you may know uh, you may not know how to to put it on paper. So mm-hmm. if you have this idea and and you're reading this novel by Toni Morrison or, or Richard Wright or, mm-hmm. or or Hemingway or somebody like that, uh, they may have already done that. So you mm-hmm. can take your idea and and you can you know tweak or or, or, or you know whatever you need to do. Right. And and uh, the second thing that uh, I would advise is to uh, just write as much and often as you can, you know, if it's in the morning hours before you go to work or late at night when you get off or just take the time to just, you know, put your butt in the chair and, <laughs> right. and, and whether you're doing longhand or, or, or by computer, right. you know, get something down uh, each and every day or, or, or as, as, as often as you can. Right. How, how much description is too much description? I've written two books and my first book, when I was sending them out for reviews, mm-hmm. There are a lot of people who say, oh, I love it. I love it. There was one person who said there was too much description for me. There was too much imagery. I learned then that everybody's not going to like the yeah. way you write something. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it's, and, and that's something I actually learned from being a journalist was mm-hmm. I could take my story to one editor and the that's editor go, yeah. oh, this doesn't seem, sound right. Yeah. I could take it to another editor and they say, this is great. Yeah. Why, why did you change this? Yeah. It was well, <laughs> you know, as you, as you know, writing is, is very subjective. Right. I mean, I've, I've written short stories. I've sent them to four and five different journals and magazines. They mm-hmm. got rejected. Mm-hmm. The sixth time I sent it out, it, it got accepted. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a very subjective process, but just continue to – to to read and continue to hone your craft. If you get an opportunity to go to a writing workshop with a published or an, an, an established writer, take advantage of it. Right. Go uh, go to some literary festivals and 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 just uh, network with 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 other writers. Right. Uh, but the main thing is to keep writing, and what you'll find is that uh, the way you phrase something or say something that will become your style. Right. And that's called finding your voice. Mm-hmm. And so once you find your voice, you can start editing yourself. I mean, you'll you'll write something, and uh, now and and, and 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 this takes time, okay. Right. But you'll write something, and then when you go back and read it, you'll 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 see that hey, I don't need this word, right? Or this word will be better here instead of there, right? But that comes with with practice. And, and and time and, and yeah and you know just just <laughs> just finding your voice right yeah well we 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 are really happy we're glad that you came to be a guest on our show I'm honored to be um, here um I employ implore all everybody out there to go out and get a copy of Edge of the Wind uh, it's available on Amazon.com. It is available at, uh, through Books a Million okay. on Amazon wherever books are sold okay yeah and um, to find out more about James Cherry, where can they go? Uh, well, like everyone else, I, I on, I'm on the web. You know, <laughs> JamesEcherry.com. Okay, uh, it's contact information there as well as, as a bio. Okay, all the all the good stuff. Um, what's coming up next? Well, uh, I'm always working on something. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, and there's there's so little time, but so many books to write. You know, I mean. Uh, there's a children's book that I would like to do. Mm-hmm. There's a uh, there's a nonfiction project that I really want to get into. Okay. And of course, there's more poetry to write. So, okay. uh, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. Well, we thank you for being on the show. Um, we also like to thank our sponsors: uh, Baskerville Funeral Home, the City of Brownsville, R and R Tires, Express and Custom Wheels, and Styles Menswear. We thank you for tuning in to Hub City Now. I've been your host, Tyrone Tony Reed Jr., and we'll see you next time.